And we're on. Over here in the upper right is our Terran player, Dystar, winning game number two with a pretty impressive one base play, uh, forcing our Protoss player down here to uh, get in a bit of a difficult situation he was unable to recover. So now in the bottom right, we have our Protoss player who won the first game, Minigun. Uh, Minigun did look much more impressive in game number one. He strikes me as a player where if he's not tripped up early, he's going to be in good shape. On this map, we do have destructible rocks at the entrance, uh, which is very important to note because that can really change what kind of rush you can do if you carve that open. And in the back of the base is a, basically a free expansion. <laughs> Indeed it is. Sending out... Ooh, that's a pretty quick probe, but I like that, man. Yeah. On a, a four-player map, sending out the probe after your pylon, that's a handsome move right there. That's a player that doesn't want to get owned by some silly cheese rush. And to be honest, if we look at the last couple games... Uh, the game that went a little bit longer, Minigun kind of crushed Die Star, and then the other one was an all-in from Die Star. So, I like I like this move. Maybe he'll be able to uh, Minigun him down. Ooh! Mm. Hopefully he's reloaded. Um, <laughs> no, it was actually terrible. I couldn't actually contribute anything to that Joker Tosis. I'm sorry. I have your puppy in my lap. Yeah. It's so cute. It is a little. This is a puppy man. cast. This is actually a three-way cast. I have a little baby puppy in my lap. Puppy can't, can't talk yet. You it's can't. Not, it's it's still learning English. It's not a, a talking puppy yet. Ruff ruff, I'm a talking puppy. Ruff ruff, ruff he's going classes. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're over at Artosis' apartment. This uh, match is going to be pretty exciting. I did enjoy casting these first two games, um, and it is again a real treat to be down here working with uh, the IPL people. Dude, the IPL one was just such a sick tournament series. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm so happy that we are Tistos is the casting archon part <laughs> of IPL too. Yeah, it's a real treat. Yeah, man, and we got a lot of matches. So guys, make sure you keep on watching IPL, especially the Tistos matches. Yeah, please, guys, spread the word. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't know uh, if you guys are still IPL yet. Yeah, if you guys are still watching towards uh, the end of the IPL, watching all our casts. I promise to tickle Tasteless and make him giggle for you. Oh no. Yeah. Not with this puppy. I might hurt your puppy. Yeah. Uh, so, as you can see, the scouting SCV has entered into Minigun's base and he has spotted the uh, additional assimilator. So and he knows what's going ooh, on. Double barracks play. As soon as that probe dies, uh, down goes the reactor and the second barracks. So, probably will be a marine rod of pressure into expansion. Uh, it's a very fine build. Nothing wrong with it. I can't say anything negative. It's a, it's just a solid choice. Uh, but Oh my god, he starts a factory as I see on the production tab. And Whoa, there it is. Oh, there it is. Alright, that's a little bit more weird, Tasteless. Well, you know, it looks like our Terran player learned from game number one that the Protoss does not have the best crisis management. Mm. He did basically stuff the Protoss into his base, and from there we saw the Protoss use warp prisms poorly. And, uh, you know, just make some bad decisions, so I guess he's hoping to kind of do um, a similar strategy, something where he's going to cripple the Protoss early on, and from there, have an easy game. Yeah, you know, I, I think money, Mini Gun, I was going to call him Money Gun. Money because, Gun. Well, he wants to win if the he, IPL, and then he, he would wins. Money Gun. Man. He can get his golden Mini Gun, man. <laughs> yeah. It would be the Golden Gun. It's like a James Bond reference. You remember that you were playing gold, uh, James Bond on uh, Oh, yeah, man. I, I think everyone in our age bracket played that game. And not only that, but thought they were awesome at it. Yes, well, the truth of the matter is, I was the only one who was truly awesome. Oh, I don't know, Taste. I was pretty sick. But wait a second, here we go. A little pressure, but that's too many Marins. He has to run out of there. <laughs> I always played License to Kill. I played all sorts of things. I, I was a license to kill guy. Grenade launchers on stack, Tasis. I will oh, bet my Oh, that's fun. I'll bet my life do proximity mines? Proximity mines, those were always a little bit goofy. I don't know. I, didn't I know the like proximity those. mines, you gotta shoot down the guy's mines. It was it was good, man. That's I think it's the only game that's not actually playable nowadays. <laughs> if you try to go back. Anyways, onto this game. Terran is pushing out. Uh, now, the Protoss is controlling the Zelnaga Watchtower, so he yeah. saw that. He saw but, it coming. you know, uh, Protoss is going to have to be very careful because it's pretty obvious that Protoss has no interest in winning in the mm. early game. He wants to win in the mid-game, the late game, and Terran is, you know, basically taking advantage of that. And kind of interestingly, when he sees the Marine Marauder walking up, 
he throws down a robo, and that's like a very long to build building, so he must be very confident holding this. He's got to be careful though, and this is a strange rush, Tasteless. It's two barracks Marine Marauder with Hellions mixed in. Yeah, well, he wants to make sure he can actually burn down any zealots, even if it's a, you know, force fields are out oh. and on the other side. Nice force field, but not trapping anything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the destructible debris that we pointed out earlier, this is uh, pretty pivotal in this situation because how many force fields are you going to have that are, could stop this army? You're going to spend all your money on sentries. You want to actually have oh. attacking units at the end of the day. Well, he just messed up right there, did not trap any units once again. You've got to trap a couple units with those force fields, literally trapping yeah. If he had trapped two Marines each time, that army would be pitiful right now, but here he goes. Pretty good force fields right there. Yeah, I, I like those force fields. You know, his army is not that strong because it's mostly sentries, but kills off what he can without losing anything. An Immortal is on the way. In an Immortal, in a situation like this, Marauders and Hellions can attack Immortals all day long, Tasteless. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think with the, the presence of an Immortal, this rush might have to end. Mm -hmm. And here we see the Terran. Yeah, you realize Die Star expanding now, but... This is a little bit late, Artosis. It is a little bit late. Uh, but, you know, we'll see if he can possibly hang on. He does have some tech already. Uh, he is getting his Stargate, or uh, rather Star Port, uh, going up right before the Robotics Bay. And, you know, I realize I always mess, mess up uh, Stargate and Star Port. Oh, I do that too. They should call it, like, the Star Spire as well. Just really get me Yeah, really make there. it hard. There you uh, go. It's like I, the same building, you know? I gotta say, uh, back there, uh, the force fields were one of the things that won the Protoss the game there. He really handled that uh, well, you know, for that little battle. Yeah, he, he did. He held it up really well. Uh, we did, and you guys should check out our uh, force field shirt on the handsomenerd.com. Yeah. Check it out. Fields, man. Now we do have a warp prism moving up the side of the map. I love this warp prism, and with Dice Star in the middle of the map, it's going to be even more effective. But just kind of controlling the movements of Terran with this is going to be quite sweet. Loads in three zealots, adds many guns, seems to like to do quite a bit, man. He loves three zealot drops. Well, this is good, and if you lose a zealots, you don't really lose a lot of money. Yeah, you don't care about yeah. three zealots. It's just much. just minerals, um, nah. <laughs> and that's uh, you know, I mean, if you lose, for instance, a Templar, that's stressful. Uh -huh. So, he has made the uh, Terran relocate. Hey, Tasteless. Artosis. Can I borrow 20 bucks? It's just minerals, man. Uh, why, man why are you those those so are dollars, much? man. <laughs> minerals are different. Oh, are they? Do do like 20 bucks trucks. costs Vespian gas. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. So, uh, minerals is like change to you, then? Yeah. Can I have a handful of bag wands? Yeah, I got a... I got a, a, a a mayonnaise jar full of, uh, you know, minerals in my, uh, next to my refrigerator. <laughs> All right, hey, here, here we go. go. Oh, oh who, who are we going? All right, he did manage to take out one zealot here. Now, even though the Protoss isn't doing a lot of damage, what he is succeeding in is keeping the Terran where he wants him. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty obvious Die Star is somebody who wants to move around the map and you know, dominate the game that way. And having a warp prism out here really changes that. Uh, basically, Terran's going to have to get a Viking or something that can drive that warp prism out. Not just that, too. I mean, he gets a lot of intel with it. Let's say that he kills over the course of the game with those three zealots, three SCVs, and forces two turrets. This thing has over the paid of itself. You know, he makes it lose some mining time. He makes the Terran sit in his base. Makes him paranoid. You know, there's more to StarCraft than just the numbers. There's also right. Does your opponent feel safe in his own base? That is actually something that contributes to the game. So I'm loving this uh, War Prism Harass. I want to see more Protosses do this. I'd like to formally thank Minigun for making. Making these games interesting. I want to shake prisons. his hand. Yeah, man. No, this, the, you are correct though. He is really handling this the right way. His attitude towards, um, you know, how to control a Terran is is pretty good. I mean, Terran and Starcraft One were much less mobile than they are mm. in Starcraft Two here in this matchup, and uh, he's made, he's basically punishing the Terran for that, saying stay at home. Now we do have Ooh. a Hellion drop here. Protoss is not uh, is made to defend here. And that Hellion drop killing a lot of probes. Very nice drop. A cannon is being warped in. Stalkers as well. Those stalkers won't be able to be used in this attack, which apparently is going to go on right now and does take that down. But let's go back to this battle now. Going after that missile turret. Going right into the main base. He's got to you keep his units together, though. I think uh, Terran is in a lot of trouble <laughs> here, oh, yes. just because... Uh, I don't, even if those Hellions weren't back in his main base, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Protoss was just so far ahead. This goes back to the fact that uh, Terran basically tried to be too aggressive and didn't yeah. succeed in it, and then uh, at the end of the day, the, the Protoss had more stuff. He certainly did. Look at this. The Colossus is just cleaning up the architecture, the layout of this base, not helping the Terran player to actually get into the surface area. 
and GG. GG, uh, well played. Brought us a little bit safer. I think he, I think he deserved the win in that series. Yeah, man. Root minigun, some great play. Totally happy for him. Uh, and he will be moving on to the round two of the winner's bracket. But don't worry, guys. There is a loser's bracket as well. Die Star is still around. You know, he's still in it. So uh, thanks for watching, and make sure you check us out next time.